in this lecture we will learn about a very good mathematical tool that is known as multiplicative inverse of a number a okay modulo m okay so we will see what it is and it's a very good tool to handle lot of interview questions so it's basically multiplicative inverse of a number a modulo m okay it's a number x such that when you have a into x you multiply and then divide it by m so you will get a remainder one so ax is equal to one modulo m okay so for example if we take here so m is equal to seven your a is four so what will be the multiplicative inverse of four modulo seven so we will find it's two because we have four into two is eight and eight modulo seven is one okay so this is a multiplicative inverse similarly m is 11 your a is 8 so our multiplicative inverse for a will be 7 because 8 into 7 is 56 and 56 modulo 11 is 1 now let's see a few more things how to find now modulo okay so i gave you some examples which are fitting but how to find that okay x will be 7 x will be 2 here and how to find it and before that more importantly why what is the use of it and why is it so important okay so we will look at some modular arithmetic okay so modular arithmetic you will see that lot of calculations in programming interviews in acm they ask that okay you are given very big two large integers okay such that there some will overflow in okay but they are asking you let's the sum is divided by m and they ask you what is modulo m the answer and of course i know even if a plus b is overflowing the answer modulo m will be less than m okay so where m we assume that it fits in your int so what you do is that this becomes a modulo m plus b modulo m overall modulo m so now this what happens a can fit okay b can fit individually but both of them the sum was not fitting so what i did i reduced a by a modulo m here i reduced b now by b modulo m and then did modulo m overall so this will be fitting in the storage okay similarly let's try to see this also follows for the subtraction a minus b modulo m is a modulo m minus b modulo m overall modulo m so if this also overflow this will not happen so if a minus b okay let's say you do it and it becomes less overflows in the negative way then also it can be handled because now you first do a modulo m it will fit your size b modulo m it will be also a small number less than m and overall it will fit this is true for multiplications also where chances of overflow are more so a into b modulo m so this can become very large so first what we do a modulo m this is small number that can fit in your int b is a small number b modulo m it can fit now and the product again you do modulo m so this is fine so this now you see it helps in if your storage size is small then also you can store the answer modulo m but does it hold for division okay so this is our question does this hold for division so it says that okay when you do a by b modulo m then this is not equal to a modulo m by b modulo m overall modulo m okay so this is not distributive okay for division so what to do in this case and sometimes this is also important because what happens if a is a very large number okay so this here also how to handle this case so here we need again the modulo operation so what multiplicative inverse does is that i cannot do like this but if i find b is inverse so a into b inverse modulo m now this will follow a modulo m into b inverse modulo m overall modulo m 
so this can be used something in this format okay so now uh, the million dollar question is how to find the multiplicative inverse okay so let's try to see how we find the multiplicative inverse okay so multiplicative inverse can be found using let's see so i will just make it look better for you not the cluttered one so the multiplicative inverse definition is that okay if and multiplicative inverse for modulo m is a inverse and such that a into a inverse when you divide it by m you should get a what it should be you should get a remainder one so by Fermat's theorem first we will try to find the multiplicative inverse so what is Fermat's theorem if m is a prime number and a is other number okay of course so integer so a to the power of m minus one when you divide it by m so it will become the remainder will be one so this is the Fermat's theorem so for example you can take m is equal to 5 a is equal to 3 so 3 to the power of 4 when you divide it by 5 okay 3 to the power of 4 is 81 when you divide it by 5 the remainder is 1 so you can check it okay so this is true then to find a inverse so we use this format theorem and what it says as I know that a to the power of m minus 1 modulo m is 1 so I can also write it as a into a to the power of m minus 2 when divided by m it leaves remainder 1 so it means for a modulo m your a inverse will be a to the power of m minus 2 using the Fermat's theorem okay so this is a very good thing but so this one example also let's try to take okay so let's say your m is what so your m is for example 5 we will take some small example your a is 4 okay so what is the multiplicative inverse so it will be directly a to the power of m minus 2 4 to the power of 3 so it is 16 into 4 64 so is it happening so 64 is the multiplicative inverse of 4 4 cube okay so 64 into 4 what will be 256 modulo 5 is 1 so this is the answer this is the multiplicative inverse okay so you get it now what we used for mass theorem and it gave us for any m that was prime but m might not be prime always okay you might want to find modulo m when m is not prime so what should be done so here we use one thing known as Euler's quotient okay the pronunciation might be wrong but you are Euler's quotient so what it says is that it is represented by phi of n which says that phi of n is n into multiplication of product of 1 minus 1 by p what are p these p's so p's are all the prime numbers that are in the prime factorization of this n and they are all less than equal to n okay so we will see how we can do using this so let's try to open the next one so Euler's and again I will make it much easier for you to understand so let's say a and m here but they need to be co-prime so co-prime means what that okay it's the GCD of a and m should be equal to 1 so now it says Euler's function it says that okay theorem that a to the power of phi of m here it should be phi of m okay it is equal to 1 modulo m which means that when you find a to the power of phi of m okay and when you divide it by m then the remainder is 1 okay so this is there so and again phi of n for any n is n into product of 1 minus 1 by p where p are all the prime numbers factors of this n okay so for example 6 phi of 616 so 616 is 2 cube into 7 into 11 okay so hence 2 7 and 11 are the prime factors of this 
so I do 1 minus 1 by 2 1 minus 1 by 7 and like this so 240 the 5 of 616 is 240 and this is a Euler's quotient of 616 so now what can be said is that if you take any a for 616 which doesn't divide it okay co prime to it so for example 5 then what will happen 5 to the power of 6 5 of 616 which is 240 so this will leave a remainder 1 when it is divided by 616 okay so you can now imagine so you this is so easy because of this Euler's tuition okay so how do we use it so now okay i have something so a to the power of phi of m is equal to 1 modulo m so now it means a into a to the power of phi of m minus 1 is equal to 1 modulo m so this means for a this is your multiplicative inverse so you can find it using eulers also this is there now you will ask that okay how you are finding such powers okay so we will look a bit at that also okay some pieces of code so fast power how we do so this is a kind of recursive equation okay so let me just take out my pen tablet from here so now let's try to analyze this piece of code so what happens here is this is fast power so it basically tells that a to the power of n is a to the power of n by 2 into a to the power of n by 2 if n is even okay and it is equal to a to the power of n minus 1 by 2 a to the power of n minus 1 by 2 into a so is it so n minus 1 plus so 2n minus 2 by 2 so n minus 1 okay plus 1 so n so this is there when n is odd so this we keep on doing recursively if your n is 0 the power then you just re re return 1 if n is 1 you return the base otherwise what we do we find the half power fast power base n by 2 we find and modulo m this arithmetic is modulo m okay return half into half modulo m okay so this way we are doing so the basic thing was here we wanted to learn about the how to find the multiplicative inverse so in fact there is one piece of code which is also there okay brute force code so that is very simple here if i want to find the multiplicative inverse of n modulo m so what we do we just start from 1 and multiplicative inverse will be less than m so we need to go on up till m minus 1 and if i into n modulo m is becoming 1 so that is your multiplicative inverse okay so these are the three ways you can calculate the multiplicative inverse so i hope you understand this thanks a lot